What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be doing an all finales guide on how to win all the finales. So first, let me ask, what is a finale? Well, it's simple, but it's also not. A finale is the last round in an episode, but for those of you who wonder what I mean when I say episode, an episode is all the rounds in one game, so if you win the finale, you have won the whole episode. And there are a total of four different finales, Hexagon, Fall Mountain, Jump Showdown, and Royal Fumble. If you want to know how to learn each finale, its tips and tricks, and strategies that you guys most likely haven't even heard about, then let's get right into the video. For our first finale, let's cover the most fun finale for me, which is Jump Showdown. Real quick, let's do a quick rundown of how the finale works. Jump Showdown is a finale with a giant gold pole that stays at a constant speed, and a smaller gold pole that speeds up all the time. At first, the small pole is slow, but as time goes on, it speeds up and can get going really really fast, especially after the 2 minute mark. The goal of the players is to be the last man standing by dodging the poles. The reason I find Jump Showdown the most fun is because of its griefing capabilities. I know griefing is mostly looked down upon, but griefing is still one of the most fun things to do in Fall Guys, and you guys know it as well. Alright, enough of me babbling, let's get into the tips and tricks of winning Jump Showdown. Tip number one is to always try and grief other people, which sounds stupid because you'll be putting yourself at a higher risk, but not if you know how to do it correctly, and that's what I'm going to teach you right now. The way you want to grief in Jump Showdown is simple. You need to be really close to the person, and once the pole is coming at both of you, tap the grab button which will grab that person, and then they will slow down and they'll be unable to move. But you will still be agile, so once you let go of the grab button, you want to spam the jump button and jump over the pole, and you can watch the person you griefed fall into the pit of slime. But make sure you don't grab the person for too long, because then you're both going to lose your agility, and both of you are most likely going to fall into the slime, and that's not what we want to happen. Tip number two is a tip to always get over the poles without being taken out for stupid reasons like lag or input delay. When the pole is coming at you, because of ping or lag, it could be hard to jump over it. Because it will look like it's in one place, but actually it will be in another place. So to make sure you guys don't get taken out because of lag, you want to always jump over it by running at it and then jumping over it. Which gives you a longer travel distance, which is good because if you're lagging, you need as long of a distance as you can possibly get. Doing this also makes sure that if your jump doesn't work, you'll have time to hit the jump button again. So no more problems from lag, input delay, or the jump button just straight up not working. I can't tell you guys how many times I've lost Jump Showdown because my jump button didn't work. It's probably in the hundreds, but after some thinking, I just came to the conclusion that I need to run and spam the jump button, and it would reduce my problems by a huge percentage. Tip number 3 is another tip to not get hit by the pole, but this one's a little bit different. When you jump over the pole and make it over is one thing, but trying to do that with other people right next to you is another thing. You always want to stay away from clumps of people because they're also going to be trying to jump over the pole obviously, but if you guys are too close to each other then you guys can hit each other in the midair, making it harder for you guys to both to get up. And if you take too long to get up, the pole is going to come swinging and hit you off into the slime. So what you want to do is stay away from clumps of people because they might hit you midair and because of a reason that I'm going to tell you in my next tip. My next tip is to watch out for others that are going to grief you. A lot of players recently have been learning that griefing is something that can be a viable strategy. But because of this, you're more likely to get griefed, obviously. So if you stay out of clumps and people and watch out for people that are going to grief you, then the only person that can make you lose is yourself. For those of you less experienced players, I recommend trying to be by yourself and staying away from people to avoid getting hit and to avoid getting griefed. But for those of you more experienced players, I would recommend trying to be the one that does grief because it's more risky, but it will give you more wins once you get better at it. So yeah, that's overall how to win Jump Showdown. Now let's move on to the next map. Hexagon, the ultimate map and a community favorite. The way Hexagon works is simple, there are 8 platforms that get bigger as you go down. Each platform has hexagons that disappear as you touch them, so you're forced to either run or jump around to stay as high as possible and out of the slime. The last player to not be in the slime wins the crown, seems simple right? Wrong, there are some strategies that you guys need to be using in order to win, especially against better players. Our first strategy is the hopping strategy. This strategy is really simple, but a lot of people don't use it and it can ruin your own game and other people's games. I'll explain it briefly. To use the hopping strategy effectively, you're going to need to run and cut off sections of the platform to yourself. But make sure you don't cut off a section that's too small because this strategy would be useless with that and you should just run instead. But also make sure you don't try and cut off a section that's too big because other people will run onto the section while you're trying to make it and they'll ruin it for you. When you have a hexagon of hexagons to yourself, you want to start hopping. The reason for this is that the hexagons you stand on give you time to stand on it for a second or two before it disappears. So if you run around, you aren't using the hexagons as efficiently as you can, but if you hop, then you're getting the maximum amount of time out of each hexagon. 
This next strategy I have is a griefing strategy, and you may be wondering how would it be possible to grief on a map like Hexagon, but trust me, it's doable. But it's only doable if you guys get really really good at it, so it's going to take some practice. If you can get close enough to someone without being caught in the tiles that disappear behind them, you can actually grab them uh, by holding it for maybe half a second, it'll slow them down, and then the platform they were standing on will disappear before they can start moving again. But since you only grab them for a short amount of time, then you will still be very agile. This strategy does take a lot of practice, so keep practicing and you guys will get better at it. Now to the tips and tricks. My first tip for Hexagon is to use the most important move that you can use, and that is the jump dive jump. Obviously, as you guys can tell by the name, what you're going to be doing is jumping, diving, and then jumping again. If you get good enough at the jump dive jump, you can make some crazy long jumps. It all really depends on how good your timing is, and which will come with practice. What you want to do is when you jump, try and jump at the very edge of the tile you're jumping off of so you can get the farthest distance possible. Then once you jump, you obviously want to dive in midair. And then once you land, spam the jump button as fast as you possibly can because by the time you get up from diving, you're going to have a very small window of when you can jump off of the tile to when the tile disappears. So spamming the jump button is a way to make sure you don't accidentally fall down. The jump dive jump can be used in succession and it's what I use to make my way in between giant clumps of tiles. If you guys practice enough and get good enough at the jump dive jump, it will help you so so much in hexagon. Trust me, I use it literally all the time. My second tip is to never give up. Even if you're on your last tile and there's someone a whole layer above you, never give up. Even though the person above you clearly has a gigantic advantage, you can still come out on top. And the reason for that is, what if the other person messes up? Even if you think they're a pro player, you should still never give up. People can mess up for many reasons, whether it be they aren't good at the game so they mess up due to inexperience, or for things that are out of their control like lag, glitches, nervousness, or they just get distracted. This tip is really good for Hexagon. Every time you feel like giving up, remember why you started. Remember, you queued up for a game to win, not to lose. Lastly, my third tip is don't always stay on the highest layer possible. Obviously, most of the time you want to be as high as possible, but in some scenarios you want to drop down early. For example, if you stay up super high but the layers below you are half gone, then you'll fall through multiple layers. But if you drop early onto the half that's still there, then you'll be able to stay higher for longer. So keep watch of what's happening on all the layers around you, and don't be afraid to drop down early if it means staying up for longer. Fall Mountain, the quickest of the finales. This mode is the only finale race mode where the first person at the top of the mountain gets the win and gets the crown, literally. This course includes spinny thingies, hammers, giant balls, and the giant balls make me really jealous because I don't have any giant balls. Wink wink. Every time I play Fall Mountain, I always go down the same path every time, and I think it is the most efficient path to reach the crown. Either that, or I get really lucky. The path is really simple. Once you start, you're going to want to jump off of the orange triangle. If you don't jump, then you're going to slip and you might as well just leave the match at that point. Once you jump off, make your way through the middle arch and then to the right spinny thing. I always just use the right side because it's more predictable for me and it opens up 95% of the time. Then you'll be met with two hallways. I usually take the left one because the way that the balls roll, it's least likely to hit me if I go down this hallway. Then, you'll make your way to the diamonds, and you want to use the diamonds as a shield, so stay close to these because the diamonds have saved me so many times from balls coming at my face, and we all know that balls in the face sucks. Wait, what if you're gay? Once you make it past the diamonds, you'll make it to the hammers, and you want to go through these two hammers because even if they do hit you, they'll hit you forwards towards the crown. And then this next hammer, you want to go through on the right side for the exact same reason. And then, you make it to the crown, but you're not done yet. You need to make sure you don't just blindly jump for the crown, make sure you jump for the crown so you'll actually be able to grab it and win. I have seen too many people fail because of this. So now that you guys know the strategy, let's go over a few tips and tricks that I like to use while playing Fall Mountain. Tip number one is that sometimes stopping or going backwards to avoid getting hit in the face by a ball is better than going forwards and getting hit by the ball. The ball that's coming at you is coming at you with a huge momentum, and if it hits you, you're going to get hit backwards and it will take time for you to get up. But if you stop or wait for the ball to pass by you, it'll take less time than if you did get hit by the ball. I can't lie though, this is a mistake that I also used to make, but over time I have learned to stop being greedy and now I take my time and now I also get more wins. Tip number two is to stay away from other people because being next to people can post threats of them griefing you either by purpose or by accident. If they have a buddy or friend that's in the lead and you're close behind that person, then the person close to you will grab you and grief you so that their buddy can win. 
or they could just be dumb and pull on you because they don't know how to play the game yet. Or they can grief you by accident. And what I mean by this is if they get hit by a ball, then that ball could either hit you because it bounced off of them, or the ball could hit them into you, which will hit you backwards and that's not going to be fun. Or if they get hit by a spinny thing, they can also get hit into you, so it's always best to stay away from others and get the win fairly. Lastly, tip number three is to listen to music while you play. The reason for this is that it's scientifically proven that you perform better whilst listening to music. And the last thing we want while being in a finale is for you guys not to perform at your best. While playing Fall Mountain, this mode is extremely RNG, so if you win the RNG part but lose because you weren't performing at your best, it can be even more rage inducing than RNG could ever be. Royal Fumble, probably the least favorite of all the finales because it's only the last 15 seconds of the match that really matter. And it can also be super frustrating because Tails can be grabbed from a mile away with people who have really weird ping. There have been so many times that I've had my tail grab from a mile away and it's super frustrating. And it's also really frustrating that players are becoming smarter and using the strategies that I'm going to teach you right now. My first strategy is for when you don't have the tail. If you don't have the tail and you just blindly follow the person who does have the tail, you're never going to win. Everyone runs the same speed so if you don't use the strategy to cut people off, then you're never going to grab that person's tail unless you get lucky. So what you want to do is look at who's chasing the person and see where the person with the tail is going to go. Once you know that information, you can cut them off, pinch them, and then you can get the tail. My second strategy is for when you do have the tail. And if you do have the tail, people are going to try and expect your moves and try to cut you off. But you're not going to let that happen. In order for people to not cut you off, you're going to have to move erratically. Think about it. If you move smartly, then people are going to expect that. No one is going to expect you to be dumb, and this leads into my first tip. My first tip is if you have the tail, you can stay on the middle spinning platform until someone comes on there. And even if someone does come on the platform, it'll take them a while to get where you are because they think that you're going to jump off, but you're not going to be jumping off. This strategy is so stupid that no one is going to expect it. And sometimes I can get a free 30 seconds or more just by spinning around on this platform. Literally no one is going to expect it. Lastly, my second tip for Royal Fumble is to practice your shortcuts. Now what I mean by this is that you need to practice getting good at moving around the map quickly and efficiently. If you want to be able to catch someone or if you want to be able to not get caught, for example, you want to get good at not getting hit by the swinging balls, and you want to get good at using the spinning platforms to jump onto other platforms, and you need to get good at being fast and dodging other players or catching other players. Royal Fumble is probably the least fun mode because of how much practice it takes to really get good at, but it's really not even that hard. Just by playing Royal fumble and trying to get better you'll get as good as you need to be if you just try all right guys that's gonna wrap up today's video i know i covered a lot in this video and there were some parts that i had to cut out because it was getting too long so if you guys have any questions at all let me know down in the comments section all right guys if you enjoyed today's video then make sure to hit that subscribe button and if you liked today's video then make sure to hit that like button and if you didn't like today's video then stop it get some help Alright boys, have a good day and peace out.